Welcome to the key facts of how to pass the strategic business reporting exam from 2024 onwards. Now, this exam again is 195 minutes in total. This means that 3 hours and 15 minutes of uh, time to tackle this paper. 100 marks in total, but there are only 4 professional marks, so split into the question 2 or perhaps question 4 or question 3. Now, in the question 1, there will be 30 marker question with 10 to 14 marks related to the preparation of the consolidated account, related to consolidated SFP, consolidated statement of profit or loss, consolidated of statement of cash flows. So one of these will be tested. And of course, nowadays, the examiner in the question 1 will give you the pre-populated spreadsheet. So in other words, the actual working papers similar to what we've seen in real life accounting. Now we've got the working papers and we've got several notes below that and what we are required to do is to make certain adjustments and to comment on them properly and that's all we can do. So for example related to associates, okay now the note for associate you've made the adjustment in your workings for example the working one there. At the same time you will need to bring this back opening a new column on the pre-populated spreadsheet there and put the numbers in and that's all you can do. And of course, inside the working, make sure that you demonstrate to the examiner that we've got the calculations inside. So not just in the cell, for example, e equals to open a bracket 348 minus 286 and times by 30%. But at the same time, I would like you to show that you put a upper comma here and then four, four, 348 minus 286 times by 30% there. So because showing both would really allow the marker to track your answer more clearly in this paper, in this Excel. So make sure that you get this right. Okay then, now. This paper, of course, question two is all about ethics and accounting achievement, whereas the question three and four were all about the accounting achievement. But make sure that you're aware that, okay, when we are tackling the ethics question, you will need to, from my perspective, the exam approach would be to make sure that you will comment on every sentence given by the examiner. So for example, uh, perhaps the finance manager is threatened by the CEO to make the accounts look right. So if that's the case then, according to the ACCA Code of Ethics, okay, make a comment of that, and that would be the intimidation threat. Because the accountant may become not objective if he or she is intimidated or threatened by the CEO. And of course, you will need to tell the examiner of what to do. So for example, simply ignore the request from the CEO. And that's all you can do. So simple as that. Making sure they will bring the keywords, for example, the ACCA Code of Ethics, related to, for example, prof uh, professional behavior, integrity, competence and due care, confidentiality, objectivity, and different threats to objectivity, related to self-interest, self-review, and advocacy, intimidation threat. So make sure that you bring these keywords with associated actions taken uh, by the, for example, accountant in the actual exam. And of course, for the question three and question four there, the examining team has a style to set the accounting treatment question, both from the accountant's point of view and the investor's point of view. Of course, most students, when seeing the question from an uh, accountant's point of view, yes, will be absolutely easy enough, okay, so comment on the accounting treatment and, and something like that. So I would say that the exam approach for this would be to see how many marks for this requirement. If there are more than five marks for this type of requirement, make sure the first step will be to quote the general IFRS requirements before you make the application and finally making your own conclusion of what will be the correct accounting achievement, what will be the impact on financial statements regarding ratios 
and whether or not it complies with the conceptual framework and for what requirement there. For any requirements less than five marks, so make sure that your focus will be on the step two and step three rather than just the step one. And of course, yes, there are lots of IVARs to be tested, 36 IVARs. Of course, in my course, I would devise the IVARs into the assets-related standard, income-related standard, expenses-related standard, and disclosure standard, and also certain current issues. Of course, the current issues from 2024 onwards, the headings for current issues have been removed. And of course, there might be new changes happening in the real life to be brought into our syllabus as well, and we will cover that in due course. So make sure that you're ready for that. And of course, the second style for the question three or question four there will be from the investor's point of view. Now, let's see the examiner's report's comment from the March and June 2023 exam. Let's highlight the weaknesses from the examining team. Poor time management, lack of depth in answers, okay, the correct accounting achievement, they're not sure about that. Uh, what will be the impact of financial statements in terms of ratios and, and, and the ethics side and the, and the conceptual framework requirements? So no three steps approach has been used in the answer, so this means the lack of depth. So, limited focus on investors needs of course in March June 2023 the question four part C the examining team has set a question regarding the IVAS 8 segmental reporting so what do I mean by segmental reporting would simply be we divide the total revenue asset and profit of an entire business into different industries or based on different geographical areas and something like that. Simple. But we are asked why segmental information is important to investors. Now, a lot of students struggle with this requirement and to misinterpret the question by saying that segmental reporting is according to IFRS number eight. And firstly, we need to identify whether or not it's a business segment. Second, we need to tell the examiner about the criteria of whether or not that would be a reportable segment and something like that related to the detailed accounting treatment related to disclosures. Of course, this is not the exam they want. And for my students, I would highly recommend my students when talking about the, uh, the investor related questions, you always think about what investors actually want. For example, investor wants this information because they've got, it helps them to diversify business insight. It helps them to understand what is going on in terms of total revenue split into different industries and which industry is the most popular industry. And we've got lots of potential inside there. So helping investors to determine whether or not the investment is correct. Helping investors to assess performance helping them to diversify their risk by putting their money in buying the shares of a target company and informed decision making so which means that the segmental reporting information informs investor to make certain right decisions of whether or not to buy or sell the share of a target company or perhaps the creditors whether or not to lend the money to a company so this means that providing the segmental information or certain disclosures will help with the investor in these four aspects. So make sure in the actual exam in the future that the type of question related to investors will be relatively straightforward indeed. Always bear that in mind that why it's important to investors why the information is relevant and faithfully representing the company specific information is important to investors well it's because it can help them diversify business insights helping them to assess performance helping them to diversify risks and helping them to make right decisions and this is why we need this information with a bit of application to the case 
you will get this seven marks and two professional marks right in the SBR and of course it will easily turn a failed into a pass in the SBR exam. Make sure they're ready. Let's read another examiner's report from the September 2023 again. Of course a lot of students poor time allocation in September exam or perhaps because that the pre-populated spreadsheet has been given by the examiner. Students are struggling with that. Lack of application, weak spreadsheet technique in dealing with numbers, right, in the pre-populated spreadsheet with a, with a bit of practice, that would be no problem whatsoever. Misinterprets the question requirements and inconsistent presentation. For example, I highlighted here, so sometimes students will use dollars, sometimes in thousands, sometimes in millions, and making a marker feeling absolutely confused. So making sure that you will use the same presentation or consistent presentation at all times in your calculations, okay? So I would suggest my students to look at the original question. So if the original question is all in thousand, using all in thousand. If the original question is all in millions, Okay, use millions, and that's all we can do. This paper is not the calculation paper at all. Make sure they're ready. This paper is all about the comment part. So make sure that for each mark in the actual exam, make sure each mark, one mark equals to one sentence. One sentence, approximately 1.5 lines, would be absolutely enough there. Right, I'm going to be stopping this section now and I wish you the best of luck in your upcoming SBR exam. Bye bye. APC, accounting for your future.